Hey, I'm excited to be with you guys this morning. Uh, I made a joke last service about how I wasn't going to preach long uh, because Pastor Weaver preaches long, and then I preached long. So I'm going to do my best to not do that this service, okay? Uh, But I'm preaching a message called The Story I'll Tell. The story I'll tell. And I have a question for you uh, this morning. What is the story that you will tell about God? What is the story that your life will tell about God? Right now, in this moment, we all have a story to tell, right? I don't know about you, but I love telling stories. Some of you have heard my trailer park stories. They're fun. They're great. I love telling stories about my past. I love telling stories about things that are funny. But I also love telling the story about God in my life. Because all of us, We all have stories, we all have our life stories, we all have uh, uh, stories about moments that created memories in our lives, but we all also have a story about God. All of us have a story about God. And whether you know it or not, the way that you live your life, your demeanor, your attitude, your actions, they tell a story about God. And so the question this morning is this, what is the story that you will tell about God? What is the story that you will tell about God? Uh, your life right now, like I said, is currently telling a story. And so my, I, I know sometimes, if, if we were being honest, if we were being honest with each other this morning, sometimes the story that we have to tell about God is not about his faithfulness, but it's about our frustration. Come on. If we're being honest, the story that we, the story that our lives tell, the story that we have to tell about God is not about his faithfulness, it's about our frustration. God, I asked you, God, I've been asking. God, I've been doing this my whole life. God, I've been faithful. I've been going to church. And you ain't coming through for me. But here's the truth. When we take our eyes off of Jesus, when our focus is not on Jesus and our focus is on our wants, our focus is on our desires, our story about God will always be frustration and it will not be about his faithfulness. Because when our focus is on Jesus, our story is lined up with his story. And we recognize that sometimes the things we want are not the things that he's calling us into. Come on, church. How many of you this morning have a story that says, I'm glad God didn't answer those prayers. Because had he answered those prayers, I'd be in a world of hurt today, right? Sometimes our story of God's faithfulness is the story of him saying, no, no, you, no, no, we're not doing that. No, I'm not giving you that, right? We all have a story to tell. Your life right now is currently telling a story. And so this morning, I have one point, one point in this message, and you're probably thinking, Pastor Roberts, if you only have one point, how did you go so long? Well, (laughs) I talk a lot. (laughs) But I only have one point this morning, and it's this, God is faithful. Oh, I, apparently I, we're in the church with people that don't know about God's faithfulness. Come on. God is faithful, church. God is faithful. And the story that we will tell is about God's faithfulness. And if you don't hear me, if you don't hear anything else that I say this morning, if you tune out from this moment forward, hear this. God is faithful to his people who put their faith and trust in him and follow him in obedience, church. God is faithful. God is faithful. I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but what you're going through, I want you to know God is faithful to you. God is with you. God sees you. God knows you. He knows what you're going through. He knows the pain that you have. He knows the storm that you're in the middle of, and he's faithful. If you keep trusting him, if you keep loving him, if you keep following him, if you keep taking steps in obedience, God will be faithful to you. And this story This book that I love, I I don't know about you, but I I love a paper Bible. It's just me. I'm not one of those new cats that love those, you know, Bibles on on the on the phones because I get so distracted. I probably have some kind of undiagnosed ADHD, ADD, whatever it is. But I get so distracted uh, by all the notifications on my phone that I can't I can't focus. So I have a paper Bible. I use a paper Bible. I love a paper Bible. Why? Because this paper Bible for me causes me to focus on the words on the page. Focus on the words on the page. And the reason why that's important is because this entire book is a story about how God is faithful to his people. This entire book is a story about how God is faithful to people who are not even faithful to him. 
Come on. This book is the most powerful book on the planet because if you get yourself into this book, the living God who is alive and breathing today will get into your soul and he'll begin to change your perspective to see exactly where he is right in the middle of what you're going through. God is faithful and this book is a, is a book, it's a story, it's a collection of stories of God's faithfulness. It's the most powerful book on the planet. Because when you get into this book, you begin to realize there are promises that the God of creation made to humanity from the very beginning of time. And this book is so powerful because not only do you see his promises, but you begin to realize, oh, God is faithful to his promises. God is faithful to his word. And God is faithful to broken people who don't stay faithful to him. The story is, the story of God, it's, it's so good, it's expansive. And, and what I wanted to do this morning when I, while I was preparing was to just tell his story, right? I wanted to open up Genesis 1-1 and go all the way to the end of Revelation, but we ain't got time for that, okay? Maybe in the 11 a.m., that's what we'll do, right? Last service of the day. But that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to tell his story. I wanted to tell you about uh, the fall of man and how God promised at the fall of man that, that uh, a savior would come, the snake crusher would come. I wanted to tell you about the flood of Noah and, and why the flood happened and, and, and the promise that we have in the rainbow that God would never forsake his people. And then I wanted to tell you about Abraham and his family and how God gave them a covenant promise that, that he would do miracles through them, that he would save the world through the line of Abraham. And then I wanted to tell you you about the exodus i ain't got time to tell you about the exodus and cecil b demille made a great movie to talk about the exodus it's a fantastic film it's hours long and you can use it you can go home and watch it if you don't want to watch the the extended version of cecil b demille there's another one called the prince of egypt um, not as good but it does does what it needs to do you know what i'm saying but then we I wanted to tell you about the exodus, the ins and outs of the story, but I don't have time. And so I'm like, God, I need a story to tell. I need a story about your faithfulness to tell because I wanna to talk to my church. I wanna to talk to my family. I wanna to talk to my people about your faithfulness. And he led me to Joshua chapter one. And in Joshua chapter one, we find that, that God has is, is, is got his people on the edge of the promise, that God had, had promised them it promised Abraham, promised the people of Israel, promised this family that he would bring them to a land that was all their own because they had been in slavery for so long and, and, and he brought them out of slavery and then they wandered in the wilderness for so long and, and now he's finally bringing them to the promise. They're standing on the edge of the promise. And this is what I learned as I was preparing for this. Time and time again, God shows up with his people and for his people, and he makes good on his promises to sustain them, to comfort them, and to deliver them from brokenness and sin. God is faithful to let his people back into his presence, even though we've separated ourselves. And this is what I learned. We need to constantly remind ourselves about God's faithfulness, church. Why? Because we are broken humans who forget instantly. The moment somebody makes me mad, I'm done. I'm out. I forgot everything that was good about them. You know what I'm saying? And because we forget, because we're broken, because we don't, we're not perfect in our mind, we have to constantly remind ourselves about God's faithfulness. We have to constantly tell the story of how in our worst moments, in our most desperate hour, God was there. He didn't abandon us. He didn't forsake us. He didn't fail us and he walked us through the storms church we have a faithful God who's given us a story to tell and so we need to remind ourselves to tell the story and that's what happens right here in Joshua they're standing on the edge of the promised land and, and, and this is what the Bible says in, in Joshua chapter 1 after the death of Moses, this is starting in verse 1 after the death of Moses the Lord's servant the Lord spoke to Joshua son of Nun he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land that I'm giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land that I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north to the Euphrates, rivers in the, the Euphrates River in the east, the Mereditan? Nope. Mediterranean. Mediterranean. 
Mediterranean. I'm gonna take another drink of water. Mediterranean Sea, praise God, in the West. I was hooked on phonics. <laughs> Including all the land of the Hittites, verse five. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you. Come on, that's a promise from God. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not fail you and I will not abandon you. Oh, did you just get the goosebumps? Because I got the goosebumps. That's a promise from God that we have. The time has come for you. Look at what it says in verse two. The time has come for you. Verse two, God is saying this. And for church, I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but the time has come for you. Just like Joshua, the time has come for you. God has a plan. God has a promise for you to execute. God has a purpose for your life. You are not too young. You are not too old. If you are still alive with breath in your lungs and if Jesus is still on the throne, then there is a plan and a purpose for your life. God has a plan for you and your time has come. It is time for you. The time has come for you. Time has come for you. And the next thing he says I, that I love, he says, everywhere you set your foot will be the land that I am giving you. Everywhere you set your foot. And sometimes we get really excited about that. Oh yeah, let's go. I'm gonna walk into, man, if this was me, right? I'm gonna walk into Chick-fil-A and I'm gonna set my foot and God's gonna give it to me, praise God. You know what I'm saying? Come on. I'm gonna walk into here and I'm gonna set my foot. And No, that's not, that's not how it works. He's saying that when you set your foot in obedience, Come on, come on. Where you set your foot in obedience to me, I will give you that land. What that means is I have called you somewhere and now you have to begin to take steps of obedience towards where I have called you. I have a promise for you, and now you need to begin to take steps of obedience towards the promise. And as you step in faith, and as you step in obedience towards the promise, I will continue to bless your life. It's a passage of obedience. That's a statement of obedience. Wherever you set your foot in church, trust me, I've been in the services where we just need to pray. Man, we just need to pray. We just need to tarry. We just need to wait longer because the Bible says those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise up on wings like eagles. Right, but we don't pray for strength to be strong in prayer. We pray for strength to be strong when we step in obedience. Church, sometimes we've been praying so long We've been on our knees and we've been praying so long that we, it's hard for us to get up because it's in this moment, God, I'm, I'm feeling you, I'm experiencing you, I'm hearing your voice and this is where I wanna stay, this is where I wanna go, but where are the soles of my feet? They're facing the ceiling. I don't think he's given me the ceiling. Wherever you set your foot means sometimes we're gonna need to stand up. And sometimes I need to begin to walk in the promise. Yes, there are times where I need to spend in prayer. There are moments that I need to be in prayer. And every single day of my life, I need to have time where I am alone and I am with Jesus and I am praying and I am filling myself up. But friends, there are other moments where you need to begin to set your foot. You have to take steps in obedience. That's a phrase of obedience. We have to begin to move forward because we cannot, we will not experience a faithful God if we do not step out in obedience. We have to take steps in obedience. And then he says this, I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. That's a strong statement to God of the universe, the creator God. He tells Joshua in this moment, I will be with you. And he's telling the people of Israel, I will be with you. And we live on the other side of, of the resurrection. And so we know two things to be true that the Israelites didn't know. One, Jesus re-ups this promise in Matthew 28, 20. When he's died and, and he's rose again, he's already proved his faithfulness to us by giving up his, his life for, on the cross so that we could have a relationship with God. And he, he's ascending into heaven and he says, I will be with you to the end of the age. That's us, we have a promise, God will be with us. But then he goes one step further and he sends us his Holy Spirit. 
And so now it's no longer Emmanuel, God with us, but we have God in us. The Holy Spirit of God residing in our hearts and in our souls and in our lives so that everywhere we go, we can experience God. Church, that's exciting. Everywhere we go, we take God with us. That means that when we're in the middle of a storm, we can experience his faithfulness because he's with us. That means that when we take steps in obedience, we can experience his faithfulness because he's with us. And God promises us this, when we have faith and when we act in obedience, he will be close to us. When we have faith, when we trust God, when we believe his word, when we take him at his word, when we have faith, we can trust and know and believe that he will be with us. And so when we have faith and when we act in obedience, when we take steps of obedience, towards where God is calling us, towards the promises that he's given us, he says, I will be close to you. I will be with you. Do not fret, take heart. I have already overcome the world and I will be with you until the end of the age. Church, that's encouraging. We have a faithful God who is faithful to us in our brokenness, even when we are not faithful to him. And so look what happens in, in Joshua chapter three, verses nine through 17. I'm gonna paraphrase this a little bit. Joshua tells the Israelites, come listen to what the Lord your God says. Today you will know that the living God is among you. He will surely drive out all the people before you. We know the phonics are there. I'm not gonna try to pronounce those. He will drive out all the people before you. He says, the ark of the covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. He will lead you across the Jordan River. Now choose 12 men from the tribes, one from each tribe, and the priests will carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth. And as soon as their feet touch the water, the, the flow will be cut off and the river will stand up like a wall. And so the people left their camp and they came to the Jordan River and it was harvest season and the Jordan was overflowing, but as soon, this is verse 15, as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the ark touched the water, the ark, the water, excuse me, above that point backed up and it, from that point kept flowing into the Dead Sea until the, until the riverbed was dry. The water stopped flowing and all the people crossed over near the town of Jericho. And the priests who were carrying the ark were standing in the middle of the Jordan River on dry ground and waited for the entire company of Israel to cross. That's a miracle of God. That's a miracle of God. God is faithful. God is faithful. And the reason why I, I love this story is because it tells us that that the Ark of the Covenant, that's where the presence of the Lord was. And it went before the people. Before the people, the Ark, the presence, it went before them. And what that tells me is this, is that there is not a place that God is calling you to that he will not go before you. There is not a place that he's calling, to, calling you to that he will not go before you. And in verse 13, it says, it was harvest season and the Jordan was overflowing its banks. So you know what that means? That means that the people of Israel got to the edge of the Jordan River and they realized it's flooded. This is a lot higher water than we expected. This, is, this isn't normal. This is worse than it could be. But the Ark of the Covenant was going before them. And so the people had faith. If the presence of the Lord will go, then I will follow him there. And the Jordan stood up. The water stood up like a wall and they walked through on dry ground. Church, wherever God is calling you, he is going there before you. Wherever God is calling you, he is going there before you. And it might look like it's worse. It might look like it's bad. It might look like it's gonna overtake you, but God promises us, I will not abandon you there. I will go with you. I will walk you through the waters on dry ground because God is faithful, because God is faithful. We can take steps in obedience even when it doesn't seem safe because we know that God is faithful. You with me this morning? Say yes. God is faithful. And then Joshua chapter four, 
And this is where I'm going to camp out for the rest of this morning. Once the people got to the other side of the Jordan, God says this in, in Joshua chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. It says, when all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, choose 12 men, tell them to take 12 stones from the very place the priests are standing, carry them out, pile them up. And so verse four, Joshua called together the 12 men. He said, go into the middle of the Jordan where the ark of the Lord is, and each of you must pick up one stone, carry it out on your shoulder, 12 stones in all, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And in verse six, this is, I love this. He says, we will use these stones to build a memorial. And in the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? And then you can tell them. They remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the presence of God, the ark of the Lord went across. And these stones will be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. These stones will be a memorial to God's faithfulness. This is the story that the people will tell, that God brought them through the, through the waters. This monument stands as a testimony of God's faithfulness forever. And if you, I don't have it on the screen, but if you look over at verses 21 uh, through 24, Joshua repeats this. And he says, in the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? And you can tell them, this is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the river right before your eyes. He kept it dry until you were crossed, just like he did at the Red Sea when he dried it up until the whole company had crossed over. And in verse 24, he did this so that all the nations of the earth might know that the Lord's hand is powerful and so that you might have reverence or fear the Lord your God forever. This is the story that the people told. What is the story that you will tell? Do you have a memorial? Do you have a testimony? Do you have a, a, a monument of God's faithfulness that you can tell the generations and the generations and the generations when they look upon it? This is where I have this. This is a memorial. This is a testimony. This is a story of when God was faithful to me, when everything looked dark, when the storm looked like it was going to take my life from me, when it looked like I was going to drown and die, when it looked like I was going to be stuck in the wilderness forever. God came through and he parted the water. Water, and he walked with me through the storm. And because God is faithful, I will be faithful to him. Come on, church. Do you have a testimony? Do you have a story of God's faithfulness? Do you have a moment where God said, I am with you, I will be with you forever? Church, what is the story that you will tell? I'm gonna be done here in just a couple of moments. And I'm gonna ask that you would respond. I'm gonna ask that you would respond to Jesus because I believe that all of us need to experience God's faithfulness. I believe that all of us need to have moments where we set up a memorial. For you, maybe it's just a memory. Maybe you've got a really good mind and you can say, I've got memories upon memories upon memories of God's faithfulness. For me, I've got to write things down. And so I've got journals all over my house with things written in them about times that God moved, that God did something real. Maybe for you, you need to pick up a real life stone and you need to say, this stone represents the time that I was in my darkest hour and God did not abandon me there he did not fail me there though it was painful though it hurt though it lasted longer than I wanted the sorrow was only there for the night because his joy came in the morning church do you have a story that you will tell do you have a testimony it's important that we have memorials it's important that we have monuments. It's important that we have stories of the moments that God moves so that when we look back on our lives, when we look back on our stack of stones, we can remember, though that was chaos, though that was a storm, though I thought everything was lost, God was faithful. He was there. He carried me out. He parted the waters for me, and I walked through on dry ground. Do you have a story? What story will you tell about God's faithfulness? Worship team, you can come. I have a story I wanna tell you about God's faithfulness. A story about God's faithfulness in my life. And, and this story, 
This is a story that's working itself out right now. It's, it's, it's a story that's not done. You know, I, I, like I said, I love to tell stories, and I have stories. I have all kinds of stories, fun stories that I love to tell. And something that I found in me is I love to tell stories about when I was, you know, stupid and, and, and dumb, and I did something dumb, and God, you know, corrected me, and, and he changed my life in those moments. But this story is a story about pain. This story is a story about anger. It's a story about bitterness. It's a story about frustration. And a lot of you know that just over a month ago, my, my wife gave birth to our daughter. And I, I wanna tell you that story because I think it was 20, 2018, I think, when Carissa had a dream. See, before we worked here, we were at a church in Wisconsin and, and we would bring students down for the Alive Conference. And we were here for a live conference, I believe it was 2018. And it was Friday night and, and we went to bed and Carissa wakes up and she said, August, I had a dream. And I said, Martin Luther King already did that. That's not, you can't steal his, it's not how this works. She smacked me. No, I had a dream. I had a dream that one day you and I would be carrying our own child at a live conference. And I said, Carissa, we, we've been married since 2015. We've been married for three years. We've been trying to have a baby. Are you sure that this was a dream from God? Are you sure that this was a dream? Because we've been trying and it hasn't been working. We've been trying. And she goes, no, I had a dream. God told me. He told me we would carry our child there. He told me we would carry our child. I had a dream. I said, okay, we'll trust. We'll believe. 2018 comes and goes, no, no baby. 2019 comes and goes, no baby. And now the frustration is building. 2020 comes and goes, no baby. And now the frustration is overwhelming and the doubt is overwhelming and the bitterness is overwhelming and the anger is overwhelming. And I'm saying, God, you told me to trust you and I'm trying, but you are not coming through on your promise. You are not coming through on what you said. You told her that we would have a baby. You told us, God, you told us and you are not coming through. You are not coming through. And Chris and I were, were at a conference one time and, and I'm frustrated and the speaker's talking about uh, his kids and his grandkids and, and I'm getting frustrated and visibly angry and I'm getting upset because God, you told me that we would have a baby. You told me. And now I gotta hear this guy talk about his and we have nothing. God, if you're not gonna be faithful to me, then why am I even here? Why am I in ministry? Why am I a Christian? And at that conference, he said, August, do you trust me? I said, I'm trying, but it's hard. He said, if you trust me, I want you to go find that speaker after this session, and I want you to tell him what's going on in your life, and I want you to ask him to pray for you. And I was wrestling with this as the session kept going, the session kept going, the session kept going, and, and, and my moment came to walk up out of my seat and go straight to him who amazingly nobody else was there he was by himself at the altar and I froze I said God I can't do this I'm embarrassed I don't want to tell somebody what I'm going through I'm embarrassed and I walked out and I began to cry because I knew that was my next step of obedience that was my next step of obedience. And so a live conference 2021, Manny Arango's here. Some of y'all know Pastor Manny. And that Sunday, my first time meeting him, that Sunday he preached and he shared about his struggles with infertility. He shared what they had gone through. And the entire time God is working on my heart as I'm sitting there and he's saying, your story is not over. If you would trust me, if you would continue to be obedient, if you would step out in obedience, if you would trust me, I will be faithful to you. You can trust me, I've got you. And I said, okay, God, I'm gonna trust you. And he said, then just like I asked you at that conference, when Manny's done preaching, you're gonna walk up to him, you're gonna tell him what you're going through and he's gonna pray for you. And I froze. I said, God, I'm embarrassed. God, I, 
I, I'm shameful because I feel like I'm doing something wrong. God, and he said, do you trust me? I said, yeah, I do. And so after that service, I grabbed Carissa and I said, we need to go talk to him. And I walked up to him and he said, I've been waiting for you. He said, I, I've known that we needed to talk, but I didn't know what we needed to talk about. And I said, Manny, you're the first person that we've ever told about our struggles with infertility. And this is everything. And I laid it all out for him. And he said, first of all, thank you for telling me, but let me be the first person to tell you that whether you have a baby or not, God is faithful. Whether you have a baby or not, you can trust that God is good. You can trust his promises. You can stand on his word and you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he loves you, that he cares about you, that he has a plan and a purpose for your life. So just keep going, just keep trusting, just keep believing that because he said it, it'll come to pass. I said, man, it's hard. He said, oh, I know it's hard. And he prayed for us. And he said, I want to, I feel like I need to challenge you with this. I feel like I need to challenge you to go see a doctor. I said, okay, so Carissa and I, we, we went to a doctor and the doctor ran all his tests and, and he looked at us and said, I, I don't know. I don't know why you're not getting pregnant. I, it doesn't make sense. Everything is working. In both of you, everything is working. I don't know why you're not getting pregnant. He said, there's one last thing we can try. If it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. Chris and I looked at each other and said, let's try it, whatever it is. So they do the procedure. They said, wait a couple weeks, take a test. And Chris and I were arguing those two weeks. Do we take a test or do we not? Do we take a test or do we not? Do we take a test or do we not? And she woke up in the middle of the night. <clears throat> and she said, I need to take a test. So she went and took a test. And She's in the bathroom and the bathroom's next to our bedroom and I hear her going, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. And I know in my brain, she, she's not pregnant, it didn't work. We tried again, we tried again. She's not pregnant, it didn't work. And she comes busting through the bedroom door with a little pea stick. We're pregnant, we're pregnant, we're pregnant. And I'm like, oh no, oh no. And we got pregnant. And one year to the day of us walking in that doctor's office was our due date. One year to the day. And God told me, he said, I told you I've got you. I told you I've got you. Just trust me. Continue to be obedient. I told you I've got you. I told you I've got you. And a few months go by and we're pregnant and we're excited and we're getting ready to tell everybody. And, and uh, on a Tuesday night, on a Tuesday night, we gathered, you know, the youth team, you know, because we've known each other forever. They're our best friends. And we told them we're pregnant, we're pregnant. And they celebrated with us. They cried with us. They rejoiced with us. And the next day, the literal next day, Carissa begins to hemorrhage. And we call the doctor. And he said, you're having a miscarriage. You need to get to the hospital now. It'll kill you. And we're crying. And now we're filled with sorrow. And now we're filled with doubt. And now we're filled with bitterness and anger saying, God, you gave this to us. You're just going to take it away. And we got to the doctor and they looked at her and they said, I don't know how to explain what's going on because your baby should be dead, but there's a heartbeat. And two more times, a similar situation happened. And every time we went to the doctor, the doctor said, I don't know how to tell you what's going on, but there's a heartbeat. Your baby is alive. Friends, I don't know how to explain it other than God is faithful and he will be faithful and he will be faithful. And just over a month ago, this little girl was born. Go ahead. You can show the next one just for fun. Adelaide Joy Hoffman. 
Her name means of noble character who has joy in the Lord. And now that little girl is a testimony of God's faithfulness, even more because when she was born, we went through the labor process and the doctor takes the baby, puts her on Carissa and says, here is your miracle baby. Because at some point during this process, we didn't know, you didn't know, you started bleeding internally. And had this labor process gone any longer, it probably would have killed you and it probably would have killed her but for some reason it didn't here's your miracle and now this baby girl is a testimony is a memorial is a monument in my life is a story that says God is faithful when I doubted when I was angry when I was ready to give it all up he said if you will trust me if you will be obedient I will be faithful to you church the same God that is faithful in the Bible the same God that we sing songs about is the same God that was faithful to me and he's the same God that will be faithful to you would you stand with me today I don't know who you are or where you're at or what you're going through in your life but I believe that there are people in this room that need to experience God's faithfulness and I'm gonna ask you to respond because I believe that when we change our position God will begin to change our perspective some of you might be going through the craziest storms your life has ever seen some of you may be going through things you've been praying for years you've been asking God for years and it just seems like he's not coming through church I'm telling you keep trusting keep believing keep praying keep knowing that God is faithful to you and if you will continue to be faithful to to him he will come through on his promises and so this morning if that's you if you would say pastor August I need a reminder of God's faithfulness pastor August I've been going through some things pastor August I need to see God's faithfulness in my storm because it's starting to get cloudy and I'm starting to lose sight if you've been praying for healing if you've been praying for somebody in your family, a loved one, if you've been praying that God would do a miracle in your life, friends, we want to pray with you. We want to believe with you. And so here's what's going to happen because I got to move back to the drums. I'm going to pray and what I want you to do is if that's you, you would respond to this altar. You would respond to this altar and just say, God, you are the same God, the God of Mary, the God of Moses, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob. You are the same God who moved back then, and I'm believing you're going to continue to move right now. So that's the first thing that I want you to respond with. The second thing is if you're in this house this morning, and you would say, I have a story of God's faithfulness. I have a story of God's faithfulness, and you're willing to pray, I want you to come down and pray for your family, your church family. If you're willing to pray and you have a story of God's faithfulness, I invite you down to help us pray. And here's the last thing, and this was hard. You might be sitting in the same boat, same boat that me and Carissa were sitting in. And you're struggling through infertility and you got questions. I don't have answers but I will pray. And so if that's you, I, I would love for you to come see me after service because I know, I know there's a God who loves you. I know there's a God who cares about you and I know there's a God who is faithful. And if you would grant me that opportunity, I would love to pray with you. I would love to begin to believe with you. So if you're here this morning and you need to encounter God's faithfulness, as I pray, just come to this altar and then we're gonna sing again and we'll celebrate and we'll rejoice. But let's not leave here this morning without recognizing where God is in our story, without asking God to give us a story to tell, a story of his faithfulness. You with me say yes. So let's pray. Dear God, dear God, I pray for every person in this room. I pray for every person in this room, God, right now in this moment that you would begin to open their eyes, that you would begin to change their perspective, and that here in a moment when they change their position, Lord, that you would change their perspective and they would begin to see where you are at in their story. That God, you would give them a story of your faithfulness to tell. That you would show them, I am with you, even though it's dark, even though it's cloudy, I am with you. 
I've got you in my hand and I will walk through this with you. Jesus, move in this place. If you need to respond, this is your moment. God, we use, we, we love you, we, we care about you, God, and we need you to move. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.